so, you're feeling terrible, frightened, anxious, as though your very soul is going to be ripped from you. Who knows what is around you that you can't see when you feel like that? And that's what I've painted. This is an interdimensionary painting. This is a painting that stands in the physical world and can see the spirit world, where I have someone in trouble. She's in an enclosed room and she feels this peril descend upon her, this threat, this demon, this beast. If it were to be given a physical form, I would have done that. And is there also a helpful spirit, a guiding light, a protective spirit, who arrives just at the right time to pull you through that trauma, that peril? And I've painted that as well. Yet a painting like this can be more than that. It can also be representative, a metaphor, if you like, for things like addiction, where people do things against their better judgment. They put themselves in this situation. Or it could represent even conscience itself. This could be a painting representing precisely that, human conscience, as depicted almost in poetic or lyrical form, if you like. But it can also be on a global scale, where, for instance, we pollute our waterways, the very essence that keeps us alive and our atmosphere. It might represent global warming, where we're all conscious of the good that we can do within us, the good within us. And yet, we drive our cars and we don't make that little bit of extra effort succumbing to the peril, the threat, the demon that is within us, the dark destructive side that is within the human psyche. So I painted it and that's what this is. It's a wonderful experience creating paintings that are interdimensional, standing in the physical world and seeing the spirit world as you conjure it in oil paint. This is how I did it. We'll look at the end result first and then I'll take you through the process. You can see the girl, the physical body here. Now that is a physical being on floorboards in a room. There's maybe a bed here and possibly a window here. So that establishes the physical environment. Then we have the bad guy. This is the threat. You can call this being evil, but it is a spirit being. You could perhaps call it a part of her. In other words, the threatening, dangerous, negative part of her being could be pulled out and made visible. You'll notice that this being is created with harsh, sharp, chunky strokes of paint. And there's a reason for that. And that is, it exacerbates the feeling of this spirit not being easy on the eye. And it's rough, it's crude, it's not refined, it's brutal. So the strokes capture that and reflect that threatening, nasty part of the psyche. The physical strokes embody the spiritual essence of it and are faithful to that spiritual essence. Now on the right hand side we have a spirit, a good spirit. The techniques here are much more refined. It is more free flowing. It is obviously light and joyous in color. Whereas the evil spirit is red with brutality and anger. All of those human emotions evoked by red. And this spirit is elevated in the air as though it has come in from the other dimension. It didn't walk into the room on the floor or get up off the bed. It has arrived in the air itself and it is disturbing the air as this being is disturbing the air as well. 
And her face and her shape, her posture, is not a portrait, it's a painting. And it's in a state of movement. The whole painting is in a state of movement. The only thing that is stable is the physical environment in places where it's not affected by spirit energy. And the woman herself, she's hesitating or caught in this moment. So essentially what's happening is this good spirit is reaching out to grab and save the girl, the human being. This is the spirit's left knee and her shin dives back into the painting. The spirit's right leg dives back even deeper into the painting as she pulls to the right and upwards. Her face and hair are all formed from spirit energy, from ectoplasm maybe. Her left hand trails energy from her fingertips as though her hand is sweeping into the painting or indeed as though she's moving out of the painting as part of the movement in that to the right and upward direction. There is also a battle between the good spirit and the bad one where the good spirit's bright energy has shot across and blasted into the face of the evil spirit. So even though the good spirit has these positive, bright, soft energies, there's also a power about the good spirit. And it means that clearly it is aware of the threat and wishes to project positive, powerful, affecting bright energy onto it, as though to extend the good energy and push the bad being away and surround the girl in positive energy, paintings which I've done before. But the bad spirit is advancing. You can see it is trailing the bad energy. It is disturbing the physical atmosphere with that negative, threatening red energy. Its claws are coming for the girl. And all it has to do is prevail by reaching its hand over and grasping the girl forever. You'll notice the girl's right arm is steadying herself on the floor. It's as though she was lying down maybe and has been pulled up into that position and is just momentarily assessing the situation before giving herself to the good spirit and going in that direction, being pulled into the light, into safe ground, into mental and emotional happiness again. But her inertia, the dilemma, of human life in this world is that it is a battle and so she is momentarily caught under the influence of the bad guy herself. She's drained of energy, she's weak, she's doubtful, she is uncertain. So that is the story. Now how did we get there? What happened? How did we start? So to begin it I laid out roughly where the elements are. Remember at this stage when I start I'm conceiving of the idea and I hadn't seen it fully realised and I didn't want to see it fully realised. I just wanted the basic elements of the story there, the synopsis. So you can see the girl is sitting on the ground. You can see her posture and her right arm is coming down already. This is all created with very loose turpsy paint. Dries very quickly and a big brush just to map out some areas and guide me a bit. You can see the big chunky Herculean size of the beast. You can see the angle of the good spirit going up through the diagonal of the painting up and to the right. You can see her hair which will be spirit energy looking a bit like hair when it's finished hopefully as I think at this stage. You can see where her face may be. You can see the bed and the window and the corner of the room and the back of the room I have located a couple of vertical strokes, whatever that may be, just to put a backstop to it, to give it a closure to the room. Those were taken out, as you would have seen, through the course of the painting, because they weren't necessary. It showed enough by what I ended up with that this story exists in an enclosed room. Now, so the idea of this is really about size, shape, location on the canvas in a very loose, free way. Nothing at all constrictive and no solid painters yet. Now we come to the first use of paint. You'll notice that the paint is very light. It's yellow, which is a wonderful reflective base for what will happen. And more importantly, look at the texture. The texture is striated, which means it comes from the brush. And it's in a circular motion where the hair is to show that I'm going to create curls and swirls of spirit energy and hair. 
and you'll see the bold definitive strokes already of the arm reaching out even though I've got it in a different place at this stage. I'm feeling the spirit, I'm feeling the nature of the energy is thrusting back towards the girl. All curls, there are no lines to show where her face is. I haven't marked out dimensions of her face, you know, the eye line and then a third down and a third up and all this kind of nonsense. None of that is there. I don't even know where the face will be or even if it's going to be all that visible. I just don't know. So I leave all of those creative options open for me, but I do make a slight change in colour going from white to the darker yellow just to define a little bit more the area of where the good spirit will be. And now I'm introducing another colour, obviously and it's all bright stuff, bright blue, it's like an aura. You can see that the texture on this is a mixture between the knife work which gives that striated sharp effect, enhancing the movement, as well as brush strokes to give a softer kind of look. Where the energy is disturbed it will be harsher but I have control over it. Now we come to the foundation colour of the room itself. This is all about perspective and the physicality that I was talking about. I wanted perspective lines of the boards to go into the painting but not too much. By making them non-parallel to the viewer adds to the sense of movement and imbalance. The imbalance caused by the question, will she survive? Will the good guy survive? Will the bad spirit prevail? So that's the purpose of that. The bed gives it that intimate atmosphere, that intimate element. You can relate to a bed, you know what a bed is. This shouldn't happen near a bed or in a bedroom. You should be asleep and happy. Adding to the drama and intensifying the effect. I'm not sure if this is a window or a picture that will be up there on the wall. And the colour is very light, very dirty, because I'm going to really cover it with spirit energy. And I have to stress, uh, no way in the world am I worried about colour in the early stages, even for 20 or 30 stages. Say, nine months work, I'm just not going to worry about colour that much. And zero worry at the beginning. In goes some shadows, just to experiment a little bit with darkness and to establish an alternative to the light. So I've got something that I can work off to show the white and how light it should be and could be when I deal with much more subtlety. Big bold strokes with the knife, sometimes with the brush to cover areas here. Being very aware of the texture that create the movement of this being moving into the frame from the rear of the painting forward towards the girl. The energy is streaming off it. I've decided to locate a heavy foot to add impact to the size so that the beast is all but surrounding the girl, increasing the threat. And here we are, that's the first day that's empowered. There's two or three hours work in that. It's given me a foundation all in texture, tone, feeling, mood, direction of all of those things, the direction of the strokes and the applications. And it is very, very exciting at this stage. And you can see the date, 16th of December 2019. It was completed towards the end of 2023. A lot of work. In the next stage, you can see some changes here, where obviously the blue aura of the good spirit has intensified to get that electric effect. I wanted the electricity around the bad guy as well, knowing that that's going to be sent way back in terms of prominence later, but I wanted it there. Better to put it in now and impose his dark, angry presence later. You can see I've broken up and darkened the background of the wall behind. And you'll see that I've added some light in the corner here of the room above her bed, coming down onto her bed. I thought maybe of putting a little lamp or something near the bed there, but I thought it might be too distracting. I'll just leave that for the moment. And I'm adding light to the floor and that light comes from the spirit. And there is a light between the two in the centre behind. I lose that later, but I thought at this stage it is kind of nice and it could account for the light that's flowing down to the right into the little bunk area of the bed. And that then gives you a foundation of where I'm at. I didn't take any more photos through the process because I knew it would be a long, hard journey and I just wanted to create the thing. So let's jump two and a half years ahead or whatever it is and I'll show you how I brought the painting home. 
And as we look at this stage now, this is about four or five stages from finishing. So you can see the incredible complexity that is built up. Some things are more defined, like the floorboards, the bed, the girl is a little more defined. The good spirit's face and hair is a bit more defined. The bad spirit's face and left claw is a little bit more defined. The light on the back wall has gone. I decided that I'd much rather that the intensity of the battle between the good and the bad spirits didn't have a gap in it. But you can see also an incredible amount of colour built up in stages. You can see also the continuation of the harsh and brutal techniques and strokes that create the bad spirit and the softer, more subtle techniques and applications for the good spirit. And the atmosphere is starting to show the interdimensions that I've got. Now that would come and go through the process through those two and a half years to here because it's such a varied thing you really have to pull and push it back into and out of more or less physicality. And here we go, these are all the stages sped up for you. Every now and then you can hear me speaking live to the camera as I describe it when I'm starting to film the end result, bringing it home. Always working with light. I know you told your friend you're not okay Tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way Cause you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts This takes away the dome shape I still want it but not as prominent And when it's dry I'll play with the light because this has got medium in it and it will settle into the painting. It's a specially um, calibrated mix to do that so it's not a pure white result and it gives me this lovely finish to this spirit energy that has taken so long to develop. Now in this painting, the spirit projects light onto this person and hauls the person back into safety away from this being. But what, just put this down, but what that also does is this person creates a stopper visually. Now I've added these strokes here so that the eye picks up those areas, those marks, and then releases the eye from that stopper. But it's not enough, so I need to enhance that. So that colour does some of it, but if I pick that colour up over here, it creates a sort of thoroughfare between the two, which creates its own moment, thus extending the eye's reach, the eye's natural reach, unforced, through the painting. And some more again. I'm going through hell, a fake like I'm fine, but I know you can't tell, like nothing I found, my mind overwhelms, I think that I'm broken, but I hope you can't help, I know I'm not perfect, but some days I can work with. Now, there's some wonderful intensity here. So her face is subtle, and indistinct. This is harsh, strong, unsubtle, and all of the marks are very distinct. But it's too tight, so I have to open that up. And how I do it, I could put a stroke of red through there, but that takes away the beastie kind of strength coming down through there. So I think I'll strengthen 
that instead. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Now these hooked talons are coming in at the right directions. These ones have splayed off because I wanted to create that effect. So having established that, I don't mind that at all. And what I'm going to do is assist what I was talking about before about containing the eye. It's already broken up a bit, but this will help. But more importantly is it gets me to point the talons at her. It's you. What a session, subtle, but doesn't it change it? Look at what it was to what it is. I'll reconsider this. Do you notice how the strokes that I put on today have set in? And they'll continue to do that. Actually, one thing I forgot to do, glaring now. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. Cause you're trying to and stay these will be glazed in. Okay, watch this guys. Do you see how this is all the same tone? Which is the kind of basis of the energy? Time to smash into that. Now you can't colour it in because it doesn't have the impact in the stroke. Now this picks up some of this colour and puts it down here, but it can't have much. I can always set it in, which I will do, I think. A couple of weeks later, it's dry into it again. Using a whole range of techniques here, transparent glazing, wiping off, creative knife technique, scumbling, the rare scribble stroke and opaque glazing. I need all of these to magicate the image, to create the effects, to get interdimensional. That pulls the atmosphere together, the spiritual energy together. Well, this may well be 
the final stage. It's dry, ready to go again, but that's if I'm lucky. The first application is going to take some sting out of that white. It just makes it a bit more ghostly and less like paint. I want to enrich the gold. You can see this is also playing with visual depth, how far away from the viewer these elements appear. I don't want her outline to be distinct. She's enshrouded in this energy, but here it's okay because the energy is being blocked by her own body. So I'm going to sort of diffuse this area a little bit. As you watch, you're seeing sometimes the brush, sometimes the knife, always with the exact amount of medium that I need in the mixed paint or unmixed paint that goes onto the surface, balancing and adjusting the degree of physicality, how much of the physical room is present, how much is spirit energy and of what type of spirit energy and what it's doing, as well as making sure that the applications capture the feeling of each of the elements the soft gentleness of the good spirit, the harsh brutality of the bad guy, the recognisable stability of the floorboards and the bed, and also the recognisable normality of them. They're very nondescript elements, but they play a vital role in this painting. And the physical body has just as many stages as the rest of the painting to show the flesh and the blood and the breathing, pulsing life that's within her. Funny, right at the end, the eye sees these strokes that I'm putting on today. And if you didn't know how to paint one of these using advanced techniques, you'd recreate what I did today at the start and completely lose their effect. Well, I let it dry, took it out, looked at it with fresh eyes, caught it unawares, and it's good but not good enough. But it doesn't need much. Now I'll do something that you're not allowed to do because no one knows how to do it unless you know advanced techniques. And that is apply a black glaze. And the idea is to take back some of that yellow that was just too yellow. That's all. And it opens up a whole lot of opportunities for me for more light. And then a transparent glaze, this time with a different gold, increasing the complexity, increasing the subtlety. So in general, the applications here are well over 100 stages of working with transparent and semi-transparent colours, so that even in the light areas, you can look through the first stage into the paint surface itself. The paint surface is a series of layers and stages rather than a singular opaque two-dimensional stage that you look at. I'm adding a third dimension. You can look into the paint surface itself and that's where you're really finessing these advanced techniques. You can't get these effects with anything but advanced techniques and this very, very profound way that they engage with each other, engage with light through the hundreds of stages that you do to finesse an interdimensional painting. So this is just the slightest pink. Okay, it's good, but in creating all of this spirit energy, it's become one dimensional and I want to get some depth into it. So I'm going to send this back, which is her right shin, get some more depth in under her. So it'll look like she's arrived out of the air, but it doesn't need too much, just a little bit. I'm going to change the colors as well. So where it's deep, it's going to be a red black. When it comes forward, I might make it a blue-black or just straight black. And where the emanating light 
affects the floorboards. I'll use more of the floorboard colour and that'll give a bit of a distance between her and the floor. So let's go. I'll set the whole leg back I think. I might have to touch these whites up a bit and of course wipe off. Now I've got dimensions coming through here. If I flatten it off too much, I lose those. So I've got to just get it right. And I do that by careful applications and wiping off and restating if I need to as well. I'm going to get aggressive in a minute, but not now. I want to get the basic developments in place. Now there's all sorts of things going on here. Light that's coming from her, depth, the spirit, all sorts of things. So this is what advanced techniques is about. What I'm going to do is be aggressive up there. So it's very disturbed air as well as being restful. We've got to get the right combination of that. This needs something, that might be it. Ever so subtle. It's impossible to do this with any other techniques than advanced techniques. Just impossible. Imagine someone trying to do all this with a small brush. Well, I think it's done. A couple of things. I'm going to expand this area, otherwise it looks like she has a big hand. And this is an area of importance as well. It's right in the center, isn't it? So I'm gonna to have to play with that. I think it's not finished yet. I may be able to do it today, we'll see. Little bit of thrusting energy. So I'll check that out later. I'm not so sure about it. In fact, I don't like it at all, which is good. I love it when that happens because it forces me to use something creative that makes it even better. Oh, now we're talking. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you Try to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away But I've known you too long, it hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to grey As you fade away As you fade away And naturally it needs an addition. Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way. I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace. I never really asked to be brought into this place. You wanna love me, well then baby have a taste. 
There we go. I think it has enough of the immediacy that I wanted. Oftentimes with these spirit paintings, I like to make them very bright. Turner said, I wish I could make the lights lighter and the darks darker. I understand why. But on this one, I've subdued it a little bit more than usual so that the eye can look into the painting rather than the painting thrust itself onto the eye. And that invites you into this experience so you can live more easily into the experience. And I think it worked. Just two very crude areas here that need a little bit of reason to be there like that and that. The eye picks these up later. There we are. Many, many months. But that includes drying time and every stage was a thrill. That's wrong. No, you'll never be the same. I don't really want to hurt you, but I can't control the pain. Now it's not done.